Hey guys, welcome back to Bandit TV. Guys, we're really checking out I mean, that reason with Jew. Does Palestine belong to Jews? Part 2 of 2. Guys, let's get straight into this. Amadidat, reasons with Jews, on the lineage of Abraham. Story continues from part 1. So in the firm, the other Jewish managers, this is the boss comes and tells him, say, you know, this guy here, dispatch clerk. Dispatch clerk is a lowly job in a white firm. Say, you know, this guy here, man, he made rings around us. You see? So he must have shared it with the other Jewish managers in the firm. He says, the guy knows something, you see. So while walking through one of the departments, clothing department, and the manager of the clothing department, Mr. Baynard, another Jew, he calls me. I was wearing my white dust coat, furniture trade. He said, come here, I did that. I said, yes, sir. He says, you know, you made rings around Mr. Beer, I hear. But you know, you can't do that to me. He says, you know, as for Ishmael, Ishmael was a bastard. Look, this, this is how they, the, the brainwash program. As for Ishmael, Ishmael was a bastard, he says. You know, an Arab would have put a knife through him. <laughs> but we couldn't afford to do that. So I said, Mr. Baynard, look, why don't you come home? We will sit down and we will talk. You know, bring your wife along and your friends will have meals together. I said, ah, you can't do to me what you did to Mr. Beer. I said, who's talking about doing anything? You come home. Hmm, not interested. And every time I get an opportunity, Mr. Baynard, I said, you know my wife? I told her, she is looking forward to receiving you and your wife. Come home. Every time I said, look, Mr. Baynard, come. You know, we are waiting for you. So he was persuaded. He comes. Mr. and Mrs. Baynard, Mr. and Mrs. Peel, and Mr. Townsend, who was a backroom boy for the Full Gospel Church. Three Christians and two Jews. They come along. I, same treatment, same treatment, feed them well, take them to the masjid, bring them back. I said, now we have teas and samosas. So they're having teas and samosas. So I said, maybe now the guy softened. You know, the tea and samosa and our meals, you know, they're very good. It might have done the job. So I'm thinking. So I said, Mr. Baynard, you remember you told me in the, in the shop that Ishmael was a bastard. He said, of course. I said, you still stand for that? He said, of course. I thought the samosas had done the job, but it hadn't. <laughs> so I said, all right, Mr. Baynard, tell me now. According to the religion of your religion, Judaism, which is better for a man to marry his own sister and beget child by her, or marry a born woman, a slave woman, a negress, and beget child by, by, by such a woman? He said, no, 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 the negress is preferable. According to the religion of Judaism, instead of having your own sister as a wife, you rather have a slave woman, a negress, a born woman, because that is what they insinuate that Hajra, who was actually a princess of Egypt, but this rubbish, they say that she was a slave woman. It's all right, even a slave woman. Which is better as a wife, your sister or a slave woman, according to your religion? He said, no, the slave woman is preferable. I said, very good. I said, you see, according to the laws of eugenics, inbreeding, which is better for you to have your own sister as a wife or you have a slave woman, a born woman, a negress? He said, no, the negress is preferable. I said, according to your common sense, which is preferable, your own sister or this negress? He said, no, the negress is preferable. It's very good. No, the answers are right, correct. I said, you see, Mr. Baynard, when Abraham and Sarah, husband and wife, when they went to Egypt, he says, and Abimelech, Abimelech, I'm quoting from Genesis chapter 20. You can check it up. And Abimelech, the king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. See, he goes there, and uh, this Sarah was a beautiful Jewess, Hebrew woman, beautiful thing. So this king, you know, he's enamored, he wants her. And there is what is called the prerogative of kings. You know, in the old, olden days, you see, the king has a right to take anybody's wife or mother or daughter, anything he wants, hey, I want that woman. You can't say no, otherwise it can kill you. So he's asking Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, according to the Bible, say, this beautiful woman, what is she to you? So Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, according to the Bible, he spoke a lie. He said, she's my sister. So if she's your sister, well, send her in to the haram. So he had to send her in. 
And things went wrong that night, you know, and the fellow couldn't come right with Sarah. We don't know what happened. But uh, next morning, he's frustrated and he's calling Ibrahim, Hazrat Ibrahim I and mean, asking him, say, look, man, because of this woman, I had a sleepless night. Tell me, what is your connection with her? So he said, she's my wife. He said, why did you lie to me? Why didn't you tell me? I wouldn't have done a thing like that. And Hazrat Ibrahim salam says, according to Genesis chapter 20, verse 12, he said, and yet indeed, means without doubt, she is my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. It's a different mother, but the, it's the father's seed. And she became my wife. So she is Abraham's sister, seed coming from the same father. And you said, according to Judaism, according to eugenics, according to common sense, that the negress was preferable. And you say Ishmael is a bastard because he's a child of, Ish of, of, of Hagar, through Hagar, a slave woman. So I said, if Ishmael is a bastard, then Isaac is a greater bastard according to your standards. <laughs> Look, you have a right to speak like that. We dare not speak about the prophets of God, Hazrat Ismail alayhi salam. Hmm. He was a prophet of God. Hazrat Ishaq alayhi salam was a prophet of God. But now you're arguing with the sick mentality. You got to get rid of the sickness. You got to give it to him with a sledgehammer. When it needs a sledgehammer, nothing else will work. If you say my man, my hero is what you say, then yours is worse. Any standard. Um, Mr. Ahmad, if your wife knows you have a servant there and she is parent, she can't bear. She can't bear a child to you. And she tells you, you can take her as wife. And the God Almighty says that your bare woman that can't bear a child, she will bear a son to you. Which one will you accept? I think what uh, young John has in mind is this, that Sarah, the wife of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, she couldn't bear any children, no children. So, you know, getting old, Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam is getting old, Sarah is getting old, everybody's talking about she's barren, she's barren, she's barren. It's a disgraceful thing among the Eastern people not having a child. So she says, look, go unto Hagar, Hajra, and beget child by her. Now, this is how weddings took place. You know, there were no ceremonies going to court before the magistrate, and then he reads out a formula to you, and then he gives you a certificate. No. My daughter, you see all the prophets when they went, because the wife said, look, he said, oh, take her to wife. That means it's yours. And he's his wife. Only man who has a right to her is that person to whom the woman is given. Hajra was supposed to have inherited, uh, ha Sarah is supposed to have been given this Hajra as her maid. And she said, look here, have her. And Hazrat Ibrahim a man of God, a friend of God. Would we say that he was committing adultery with her? If he was, God Almighty would have reprimanded him. No. His friend, Khalilullah, the friend of God, Everybody says, the Jew says, the father Abraham, the Christians say, father Abraham, Muslims say, father Abraham. This father of ours committing adultery? Can we ever think like that? Can we ever talk like that? Hmm? So he goes unto her and she begets a child. Now when she begets a child, for 13 years, there was no question about an offer being made. He said, look, do you want to do this one or that one? There was no question because the woman is not getting it. Sarah is not getting any children. And for 13 more years, she didn't have anything. 13 years. Hazrat Ismail salam was the only son and seed of Abraham for 13 years. After 13 years, Allah wants to also bless Sarah. And so he, she also gets a child and his name was Ishaq. So what is the problem? If God Almighty, according to the Bible, he says, and as for Ishmael, Ishmael thy son, and as for Ishmael, I see, if you believe that this is the word of God, then God is saying, Ishmael, your son, if God accepts, who the hell are you? Or any monkey, you know, to take, says, no, he's not his son. What right has anybody to come along and deny him that right? If I married a Bushman woman, 
or a Hottentot woman, and she gave birth to a child. I accept that child as my child. What right have you to say that's not my child? I ask you. Have you any right? So on the standard, the Jewish standard, he said, look, you think that Sarah is the legitimate wife and this is the illegitimate wife? I said, look, even then, your progeny in which Jesus came is a rotten, a rotten progeny than that of Ismail on the standard that you are giving. We are not creating the standards. These are not our standards. These are the standards as we are. You judge, and Jesus told you. He says, judge not, that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, ye shall be measured unto you. He said, you hypocrite. He said, why seest thou the beam in thy brother's eye, and seest not the mote in thy own eye? He said, first remove the mote from thy own eye, before wanting to remove from your brother's eye. He said, you must heed that warning. Heed that warning, that before you point a finger, think twice. This man, the Jew, didn't think twice. So he got into a mess. We must think twice before we open our mouth. What you say, how you judge other people. Like, Guys, share, and subscribe like, to create. I was shocked that if I my sister's first book. No, I don't see anyone we s will say Ishmael is not Abraham's child. Like, it is stupid for you to say that. He is the child, but I want to remember clearly. But I don't really know why Ahmed doesn't talk about it. Ahmed just was talk about the promised child. And if since he were using the Bible to give reference, like we use the Bible too, because the promised child in the Bible was actually Isaac. That was what was written. So guys, if you remember when the angels came to meet Abraham and Abraham fed them, they were like, you will conceive your wife will conceive and she doubted at first but it came to pass like so like that was a miracle and based on the bible isaac was the promised child i'm not disputing the fact that ishmael was abraham's son ishmael was abraham's son but isaac based on the bible was the promised child so i think what you think about this and the part one, guys. I'll see you next time, guys. Peace.